Praise the Lord, everybody. 2 Thessalonians verse, chapter 3, verse 3 tells us, But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish and keep you. We have a blessed assurance today because Jesus is mine. We can rest. We can have hope for our future because we have a blessed assurance. Here we go. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation. Purchase of God. to the Victory Tabernacle Church of Raleigh Morning Worship. We are declaring that this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. 
Oh, magnify the Lord with me today and let us exalt his name together. For I sought the Lord and he heard my cry and delivered me out of all of my distress. Yes, if that's your testimony today, amen, then God is worthy to be praised. We want to thank you and welcome you, amen, for being a part of this broadcast this morning. Say to you, Victory, good morning to our guests. We welcome you, and we are praying that God would richly bless you and your family and your lives and just uh, show himself strong and show himself mighty. We are praying for you that God will continue uh, to strengthen you, to heal you, to uh, deliver you out of whatever situations that you're dealing with, for God to just elevate you and just show yourself, show himself strong and mighty unto you. Yes, draw you closer to him, causing you to look up to him because we realize that he's our help. And we realize that he's the source from which all of our help comes from. The writer declared that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. So we're just giving God praise for that. And we're again that uh, our intercessory prayer team is, is praying for you and we're praying for Again, our nation, you know, with all the unrest and, and all the things that are going on, it is a praying time. I mean, not a time to just talk about it. It's a time to pray about it. And so we're so glad that God has called us to be intercessors. You know, so much hinges on the church. So much hinges and is centered around, amen, how the church responds to things. So we're, we're just asking you as saints of God that we will begin to bombard heaven, that we will begin to stand in the gap. We begin to just to intercede because wicked people do wicked things. Yes, uh, uh, people that uh, don't have Christ in their life and don't reverence God, amen, they are subject to do anything. But we are praying that God would save, that God would send a revival, that God would continue to uh, deliver his people. We don't want to be like Jonah. We don't want to get mad to the point that we don't want God to save them because it is God's will that every man, woman, boy, and girl would come to know him. It's not his will that any should perish. So again, let's pray for our nation. Let's pray for the people of our nation. And while we're on that note, let's pray. Father, we thank you for uh, this opportunity uh, to stand in your stead this morning. We thank you for this opportunity, Lord, that we have to be used as an instrument for your glory. Father, we ask in your blessings upon us now, Father. Lord, as we minister to these, your great people. Father, and we're just declaring today, Lord, that your word will go forth and it will not return. It will accomplish that that uh, you desire for it to accomplish. Lord, it would prosper in all the places, Lord, that it lands, Father. People would receive it, Father, and mix it with faith, Father. In the name of Jesus, Lord, that they may be blessed in all their dealings and all their doings and all their deeds. In the name of Jesus, Father. Lord, I ask you, Lord, for a touch now, Father. In the name of Jesus, Lord, that I might be an instrument, God, in your hand. Father, use me for your glory, Father. And we just ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Um, I want to call your attention today to our theme scripture, Hebrews uh, 13, chapter, Hebrews chapter 13. And uh, I solicit your prayers. Um, it's not a virus, but I haven't been feeling well, but God is good. And, and he's worthy to be praised. Amen. Uh, so Hebrews chapter 13, uh, our theme for the year, remembering our past uh, to face our future. And our base scripture is Hebrews 13 and 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today 
and forever. Um, and today, um, we want to speak from again from that sixth uh, verse, uh, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man do unto me. Also, First Samuel, First Samuel, chapter seven. I don't normally read this much, but I'm going to read them today. First Samuel, chapter seven. And the men of Kirjath Jerim came and fetched up the ark of the Lord and brought it into the house of Abinadad in the hills and sanctified Eleazar his son to keep the ark of God. And it came to pass while the ark abode in Kirjath Jerim that the time was long, that it was 20 years, and all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, If ye do return unto the Lord with all your heart, then put away the strange gods and astra from among you and prepare your hearts unto the Lord and serve him only. And he will deliver you out of the hands of the Philistines. Then the children of Israel did put away Balaam and Ashtoreth and served the Lord only. And Samuel said, gather all Israel to Misfit and I will pray for you unto the Lord. And they gathered together to Misfit and drew water and poured it out before the Lord and fasted on that day and said there, we have sinned against the Lord and Samuel judged the children of Israel in Misfit. And when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered together to Misfit, the Lord of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. And the children of Israel said to Samuel, Cease not to cry unto the Lord our God for us, that, we will, that he will save us out of the hands of the Philistines. And Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it for a burnt offering holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel, and the Lord heard him. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to the battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with the great thunder on that day upon the Philistines and discomfited them, and they were smitten before Israel. And the men of Israel went out of mischief and pursued the Philistines and smote them until they came uh, under Bethkar. Then Samuel took a stone and he set it up between Mishmet and Shem, and he called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, Here too hath the Lord helped us. So then the Philistines were subdued, and they came no more into the coast of Israel, and the land of the, the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the day of Samuel. I want to talk to you today um, from the thought, the prerequisite for help, uh, the prerequisite for help. And the subtopic, uh, we got to go back. Yes, a prerequisite for help. This word prerequisite sounds like a big word, and it is, but it's also a uh, precursor to some small words. Uh, a prerequisite um, has something to do with uh, something that has to happen before something else, something else happened. It's a must. A prerequisite is a necessity. It is a essential. It is a precondition. It is something vitally important. Webster says a prerequisite is something that must happen before something else can happen something that must be done beforehand and it is required in order to get results. A condition that must be met or happen before something else can occur. So we've been talking about the fact that God is our help 
and that we can look to, Lord, to the Lord uh, for help. And we can boldly claim that God is our help. But our text here uh, tells us that uh, this ain't something that's just going to automatically appear, automatically happen, that there is a prerequisite to God's help. Our text and our subject today has one purpose and one only, and that is to help us understand that we need to take God Seriously, for too long we have taken God's blessing, grace, mercy, love, and help for granted. We have become so familiar with God until he has become common to us. Yes, and I think about our late uh, Mother Geraldine Privet, who was my mother-in-law, amen, uh, when something like that was said, one of her favorite comebacks was, Lord, have mercy. Yes, some, someone said that familiarity breeds contempt. We have become a careless nation. We have become a careless people, careless with the, God's name, careless with God's word, careless uh, with his spirit to the point that we grieve it to no end. Careless about uh, the respect that his house deserved. Careless about the reverence for him and the authority that he uh, carries. Careless about the respect uh, for his people. And we have just become a careless people, a careless nation. No wonder people keep asking, what in the world is going on, Bishop Horton? Uh, and where is God? If you allow me, I will tell you where he is. He is sitting up in the heavens and he's laughing at the contempt of men because Psalms 2 and 4 says uh, he will have them in derisions because they reject his sovereignty. They reject his sovereign word. They reject his sovereign authority. Yes, uh, and, and he will laugh because all of our clever and feeble efforts to turn things around will be bought to naught. Make no mistake about it, amen. God will not be marked. Listen at Isaiah as he writes uh, to the people of God in Isaiah 59 verses one and two. He said, behold, the Lord's hand is not short that it cannot say, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God and your sins have hid his face from you that ye, he will not hear. Isaiah is simply saying, amen, that we are calling for help. Amen. But God is not listening because we have not met the prerequisite. Yes. Uh, in uh, Second Chronicles 7, verse 13 and 14, uh, we often read verse 14, but I want to read 13 today because it is the prerequisite for God to hear us, amen, and send help. He said, if I shut up the heavens and there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Our text here today opens a floodgate of light on a people that uh, has forgotten God, a people who have left their God and a people, amen, who, amen, cannot find God. Therefore, amen, they have, they have lost him. Uh, anytime uh, we lose God, we lose God's help. Uh, 
my task today, amen, in these few minutes while I have your attention is to let you know, amen, that if we're going to get God's help, we're going to have to go back. Go back to that old landmark. Go back to the altar. Go back and fall on our knees. Yes, God is calling for repentance if we want his help. Uh, we can't placate God. Yes, but we have to take God seriously. If you read a few chapters of Israel's past, you would find out because of their sins and disobedience that they lost the possession of the ark. The ark represented God's presence. It represented God's power. It represented God's protection. It represented God's provision. To lose the ark to the enemy was a symbol of them losing God's presence, losing God's power, losing God's protection, and losing God's provision. Then our text say that for 20 years they had not miss God in verse two. Think about that. 20 years they have not missed God. We live in a nation now we're in for not just 20 years, but for decades and decades. Amen. They have not miss God. Amen. But trouble brought Israel to their knees. Trouble brought them to a point that they began to lament for God. Yes, they went into depression because of their suppression of the Philistines, which now they were experiencing spiritual oppression. Yes, you see, depression comes from within. That's why I often tell people in council that nothing, amen, can, uh, not, no, no person or nothing, nothing can uh, depress you because depression comes from within. Suppression comes from without, from the enemy. Yes, oppressions come from above through princip principalities and powers, rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places, according to Ephesians 6 and 12. If you can't look, and we can't look and all that is going on in America today and believe that there is a devil loose, amen, then God help us. That's why you can't play around with the devil because eventually he's going to end up with all the marbles. And I'm not just talking about those marbles of glass, amen, rolling around, amen, on the ground. And I'm not talking about, amen, just uh, uh, some uh, figment of our imagination, amen, when it comes to our marbles. We mess around with the devil and the devil, amen, will have our mind. And that's what's going on in America today. Amen. The devil has the mind of people and they have gone crazy. The Philistines took their goods and their possession. They beat them into submission through slavery. They slew their children and destroyed their homes and their families. Even though the Philistines meant it for evil, God meant what the Philistines meant for evil for good. The very thing that the Philistines used to try to destroy Israel, God in turns will use it to deliver them. They began, I mean, to lament after God. Their lamenting was a sign that inwardly they were convinced that nobody outwardly could help them but God. I believe that they began to sing, Oh Lord, I love you. You are the desires of my heart. There were others that probably were singing, oh, Lord, I love you. Show me the desires of my heart. One of the things that can help us when we are low and uh, seemingly that we have no hope is that we can make sure, amen, that we are high on desire. We are full 
of desire. Proverbs, the 13th chapter says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when the desire comes, it is as a tree of life. All the haste and tell you that I'm talking about a genuine desire. Amen. Not a manipulative desire. I'll tell you what a manipulative desire is. It's one of those that we uh, uh, really uh, don't want God, but we just want God to help us. Uh, we, 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 we really don't want God, but we just want God to get us out of the mess that we're in. We really don't want God, but we just want him to deliver us out of our troubles and heal our diseases. We really don't want God, but we just want God to keep us alive when we think, amen, that we're at the threshold of death. So we, 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 God want a genuine lamenting, a genuine desire and love for him. In verse three, we see that they wanted God's help, but think about it. The reason why they hadn't got God's help is because uh, they wanted to keep their idols too. They wanted to worship God for help, but yet worship the idols for their life and living. They like many today say, I want to be saved, but still want to live like a sinner. I want to go to heaven, but I want to take my sins with me. I want to be in the church, but I don't want the church to be in me. Sad to say the cheap grace that is being preached today justifies and satisfies that kind of mindset. You got people today, amen, hollering legalism, legalism. It don't take all of that. But God is a holy God. He's always has been a holy God and he always will be a holy God and he's calling for a holy people and there's something different about God's holiness and there's something different about the people that are claiming God's holiness that's why Paul says amen in our foundation text amen in our theme for the year in Hebrews 13 verse 9 but be not carried about with diver and strange doctrine having said that so much of what is being peddled amen as a revelation from God is just a glorified opinion of someone trying to to seduce people, amen, and to get them to go in the direction they want them to go and do something that they want them to do. That's why, amen, Paul admonishes us, amen, that we should, uh, uh, in, in that same text, be established in the grace. In other words, get in the word. Get the word in us. Know the word, live by the word, believe the word, and let nothing separate us from the love of God and the love of his word. In that same verse, Samuel was declaring to them that they would not get any real rest. They would not get any real peace until they return to God. We got to go back. Paul said in Romans 14 and 17, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Our, our president, amen, present president, amen, with a 12 a uh, hundred dollar stimulus found out that he couldn't do it. And our new one, amen, who may be promising a $2,000 stimulus will find out, will, will find out easily that he's not going to be able to do it either. We got to go back as a nation. We got to turn back to God as a nation. Amen. We got to turn from our wicked ways and we got to begin to seek God. Now I know, amen. What I just said, amen, have turned somebody off. Amen. And you may be contemplating unscribing uh, me, but I want to say to you, amen. One of the things that I'm known for is being a sportsman. And one of the things I love more than anything, 
amen, is to fish. And I consider myself, amen, a great fisherman. And see, I, as a preacher, I understand the importance, amen, of preaching the gospel. And when I get pushed back from it, that lets me know that I'm on the right track. What lets me know, amen, that I've got, amen, a large bass on the end of my line is because he begins to fight back against the pressure that I put on him. And that's the way it is with the gospel. When we are reaching people, amen, with the gospel of Jesus Christ, yes, you're going to get pushed back because people don't want to turn from their wicked ways. People don't want to come out of sin. People don't want to live a lifestyle, amen, that is pleasing to God. So let's close today. I ain't going to talk to you long because I'm just here to tell you that we got to go back. Amen. So as we close today, amen, we'll find that there is a prerequisite, amen, for help in our text. Samuel told them three things, amen, that they were going to have to do, amen, in order to get the ark back. And in getting the ark back, it represented, amen, they had help from God. They had his presence. They had his power. They had his protection. They had his provision. And they had got all of that back all because they met the requirements, all because they did what God had called them to do in order for God to do what he said that he would do. And I'm telling you today, amen, if we want to get help from the Lord, we're going to have to go back, go back to that old landmark. Yes, that Samuel told them three things that they needed to do. First of all, he says they need to put away the strange gods. And we're going to talk about that next week. If I should live and the Lord should spare my life and I'll be in my health and strength. He told them, you got to, if you want God's help, you got to put away your strange God. There's only one God and, and one true and living God. Secondly, he told them they have to prepare their hearts. Thirdly, he told them they had to serve God and serve him only. That was the prerequisite, amen, in order, amen, for Israel to get help from God. In order, amen, for them to get God's presence back. In order for them to get God's power back. In order for them to get God's protection back. In order for them to get God's provision back. And we are living in a time now, we need God's presence. We need God's power. We need God's protection. We need God's provision and we need God to heal the land. But we got to meet the requirements. If my people, yes, will come back to me, if my people would turn around, if my people would repent, if my people would begin to lament, amen, because they see that God's presence, amen, is seeming to be absent in the world today. God's power is seemingly to be absent in the world today. God's protection is seemingly to be absent today. God's provision is seemingly to be absent today. Don't fool yourself. Amen. The devil, amen, uh, in his strategy will try to make us comfortable with the things that we have, making us think that we're okay when God's got better things, when God's got greater things. That's one of the things that the enemy used. He wants us to become content and satisfied when God God has greater things for us. And in verse 12, amen, they got the victory and Samuel, amen, was able to set up a stone of remembrance and said, here too had the Lord helped us. What was it, amen, that gave them the victory? What was it that uh, caused Samuel to be able to set up a stone and say, here too has the Lord helped us? What was it that they did that the Bible said that the Philistines, amen, never bothered them again, never troubled them again, never came near their coast. It was something about the preacher, Samuel. It was something about the fact that 
God used him to turn them back to him. It was something that Samuel said, amen, that sparked, amen, a genuine love for God that sparked a revival in their hearts and caused them to repent and return back unto God. Those three things, amen, is in our text and they're going to happen today as I stand as Samuel stood, amen, and tell you, thus saith the Lord, how did they respond? I told you a few minutes ago, amen, especially when I spoke about the fact, amen, about the presidents. Yes, yes, and we had one, amen, that gave us a, a $1,200 stimulus, amen, but yet the world is getting worse. We have another that, that's coming on the scene that's promising enough, amen, that would possibly even get a $2,000 stimulus. They already start sending part of it and they're going to send some more, but money ain't going to help us. Yes, yes, Paul declared that, amen, that, 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 that what we need is not in me and what we need is not in drink. Amen. The kingdom of heaven is not about that, but it's joy and peace and the Holy Ghost is living in the presence of God, is living in the power of God, is living under the auspices of God, under his care, under his provisions, under his protection. That's what Samuel tried to get them to understand. But what was it, amen, that bought their deliverance? What was it that bought their help? What was it that made them uh, understand that if they returned to the Lord, he would return unto them? It was all about what Samuel said. Number one, they believed the words of Samuel. Let's look, amen, in verse four. Then the children of Israel did put away Balaam and Astrip and serve the Lord only. And Samuel said, gather all ye uh, Israel, Mishra, and I will pray for you unto the Lord. Look what they did. They believe what Samuel said. And if God is going to do something in this nation today, God's people has got to believe what God said. Samuel was only saying what God said. Yes, those prophets, uh, those that God sent, amen, in his stead, he promised them that he would put his words in their mouth and they would speak the things, amen, that he was speaking. Yes, and when, when they got their push, when they began to get pushed back, amen, from the people, God let them know it wasn't about them, it was all about what they were saying. So they believed Samuel, for the Bible says they put away Balaam, Balaam and they put away Asher, and they served the Lord only. They believed in the prayer of Samuel. Look at verse 8. And the children of Israel said to Samuel, Cease not to cry unto the Lord our God for us, that we will that he will save us out of the hands of the Philistines. They believed, amen, that they had a man of God. They believed that they had a true leader. They believed that they had someone who had connection with God and asked him that he would go to God. And when he went to God, they believed that when he went to God, God was going to give him an answer and they were going to get relief. Not only, amen, did they believe the words of Samuel, not only did they believe in the prayer of Samuel, but they believed Samuel's faith Amen. And uh, end uh, his prayers. Look at verse nine. Amen. And ten. And Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it for a burnt offering uh, holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel and the Lord heard him. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines and discomfited them. And they were smitten before Israel. Now, they, they, they not only believed in Samuel, but they believed in the faith 
that Samuel had, amen, when he prayed. I just stopped by here a little while to tell you this morning that there is a prerequisite for our help. And just as he told, Samuel told the people of Israel, they had to turn from uh, their strange God. They had to put them away. They had to prepare their hearts and they had to serve God and God only. God is calling us today. Amen. To do the same thing. Remember what we said. Remember our past. Amen. So that we will be able to face our future. He's the same God. He's the same God of the past. Amen. As he is of the God of the future. And if we are going to expect God to do amen something for us. Amen. To come. We must look at how God did it before. He has not changed. God is still called for repentance. God is still calling for men to turn from their wicked ways. Man is still calling for men to put away their strength. Uh, God is still calling for men to put away, their, put away their strange God. God is still calling for us to believe his word. God is still calling for us to trust those that he sent to preach his gospel. The Bible says, amen, that they pretty much believed in the faith of Samuel and his prayers. The Bible Bible said faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we don't want to walk around here, amen, lamenting like Israel did because we have lost the protection of God, because we have lost the presence of God, because we have lost the provision of God, because we have lost the power of God. No, 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 no. God is saying, if you return unto me, I will return unto you. And the Bible says, Amen. That God routed the Philistines. He discomfited the Philistines and they came no more to their coast. And Samuel set up a stone and said, here too have the Lord helped us. And I don't know about you, but I want a stone of remembrance. Amen. In 2021, I want to put away my strange God. I want to prepare my heart and I want to serve God and God only. And I'm thanking God right now for the victory, amen, that he's going to give us in this nation, for the victory that he's going to give us in this land, for the victory that he's going to give his people. And in the midst of all the chaos, in the midst of all the pandemic, in the midst, amen, of all the, 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 the madness and, and, and the foolishness that is going on in this country and that that they are expecting to come, we will be able to say, say here too have the Lord helped us. My God, my God. We want to explore those three things that Samuel just said, amen, unto uh, the people of Israel because that's what God is saying to us on next week. But at least now we know what it's going to take to turn things around. What it's going to take to set things right. What it's going to take to break the back of the enemy, amen, that is having a field day in our land today. Samuel said, put away your strange gods, prepare your hearts, and serve God only. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. And we thank you, Lord, for sending your word. We thank you, O oh God, because we have heard your word. And Father, Lord, we're going to turn back to you. We're going to put away our strange gods. We're going to prepare our hearts and we're going to serve you only. And God, you're going to do mighty, wondrous, miraculous, phenomenal things in 2021. Because God, we're going to obey your word. We're going to obey the prophet. We're going to do what you have called us to do. And Lord, we're going to be able to say, when it's all over, here too have the Lord helped us. And Father, there may be someone here today or listening today, Lord, that have strange gods. They haven't prepared their hearts. They're not serving you. They're not saved. They don't have a personal relationship with you. I pray today, Lord, 
that they will understand that you sent your son, Jesus. He gave his life to pay their price. As Samuel stood in the gap for the people, Jesus has stood in the gap for them. And I pray today, Lord, if they're that person, they would pray with me. Lord, I have not been serving you. I have been serving other gods, but I realize today that you died for my sins. And I realize that God raised you from the dead, gave you new life, and you are offering me that new life today. You are offering to break the power of sin off of my life. You are offering me an opportunity that I can get the penalty of sin revoked off of my life through the blood of Jesus. I ask you by faith, come into my heart. Save me, Lord. Save me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you are that person today, I believe that God has touched your heart, has touched your life, and that God has made you a new creation. I want to say to you, get in God's word. Amen. Begin to live by God's word and begin to receive that life more abundantly that he's promised. And I say to you, uh, saints, and to you that are listening, God is saying that he has a prerequisite in order for him to move, in order for him to work, in order for us, amen, to get help from him, we got to meet those requirements. And God is calling for us, amen, to put away our strange gods. He's calling for us to prepare our hearts. He's calling for us to serve God and him only. God bless you today. I trust today will begin to be a day of uh, introspection, a day of inspection, and a day that we will say to ourselves, Lord, we got to go back. We got to return unto you. God bless you. Have a great day.